I'm going to start with a quiz question today. Do you know which is the first Bollywood movie to earn more than 100 crore rupees? You can't guess it. It was Disco Dancer, which made Mithun Chakravarti a big Bollywood star. And uh, he became famous not only in India, but actually all over the world, especially in the Soviet bloc in Eastern Europe. The movie made 100 crores in 1982. And if you think about it, adjusted for inflation, that's close to 1,500, 1,600 crore rupees today. That's how big that movie was. But uh, it wasn't Mithun's debut. In fact, Mithun Chakravarti didn't make his debut in Hindi commercial cinema. His first film was uh, directed by the famous Bengali director uh, Mrinal Sen and it was called Mrigaya. Mithun uh, acted in that and he won the national award for best actor in that movie. In fact, he went on to win another national award for best actor and another for national award for best supporting actor. So three national awards as an actor. That's what Mithun Chakravarti uh, won. And uh, if you think about it, in most people's minds, Mithun Chakravarti is essentially the disco dancer. He acted in, um, in these uh, Hindi commercial movies and later on in B-grade, uh, low-budget Hindi movies. And that is what he became famous for. In fact, uh, if you think about it, his big appeal has always been amongst the working classes, amongst the urban poor. Now, uh, Mithun was not just an actor. He was always politically pretty active. He wasn't a full-time politician. In fact, he started off by his own admission as a Naxalite. He was underground, or as in, uh, he was in hiding. And he had links with uh, the uh, Naxal leader, Charu Mazumdar, till his brother died in a freak accident and he came back home and his father said, leave West Bengal. So he went to Pune, joined the Film and Television Institute of India, FTII, and from there, he went to Mumbai. And that is how he made it big in uh, Mumbai, uh, in Bollywood. Uh, but, as I said, that he always had his connection with politics, especially left politics. He was a great supporter and fellow traveller of the left front at the CPIM. He was close to West Bengal's uh, former sports minister, the late Subhash Chakravarti. He had a decent equation with Jyoti Basu as well. And uh, he did a lot, gave his time, he gave his money to projects on the ground, which the left front was pushing for the people. Uh, so Mithun had a very clearly identified role in West Bengal uh, on the ground as a left-oriented actor. So why would the BJP choose such a person? Why would they choose a person who's identified with the left in West Bengal to be their de facto face in the state? He's already past his prime. He's uh, 70 years old. Why are they choosing this man? Can he really make a difference? To know the answers, keep watching this episode. In my last episode, I told you how the BJP rose in West Bengal. It's phenomenal rise from 2014 to 2019. Uh, it, it had 17% votes in 2014 and that went to more than 40% in 2019. On the face of it, it all came from the left front. The left front dropped more than 22% and the BJP gained 23%. And you can watch that episode. We'll give the link in the description. But obviously, it's not as simple as that. In fact, if one looks at the core uh, catchment area of the BJP, which is generally the majority, the Hindus, uh, it has always had a much higher vote share there and gets a very small vote share of Muslims. So in West Bengal, 73% of the population is uh, Hindu uh, and uh, about 27 odd percent is Muslim. So if you look at it, the BJP's vote share in the Hindu space actually rose pretty sharply and the Trinamool Congress also lost Hindu votes. It's about five odd percent Hindu votes was lost by the Trinamool Congress. How do I know that? This is projected by CSDS Loknitis post poll survey in 2019, which tends to be a little more accurate because people have already voted. They're not telling you who they'll vote for. They've already voted. They have had time to think about whether they should reveal or not. So that tends to be a little bit more accurate, never as accurate, but you can see a trend. So therefore, you can say the Trinamool Congress definitely lost 5-6% of the Hindu vote to the BJP and it gained Muslim votes from the left and the Congress because Muslim voters saw a polarization. They wanted to vote for the voter they thought 
will win. They saw that the left-hand Congress is not winning, so they moved to the Trinamool. 8% gain from there and 5% loss of the Hindu votes to uh, the BJP and therefore a 3% gain, 8 minus 5, 3% gain for the Trinamool as well. Now, where has the BJP got most of its vote share from? Yes, it has increased in the upper caste space. Upper caste have uh, also had voted for BJP earlier as well. In uh, throughout, uh, we've seen since 1991, there has been a certain upper caste vote for the BJP. In 2014 as well, there's been a strong upper caste vote. The big gains for the BJP from the, mostly from the left, but a significant chunk from the Trinamool as well, has been in the OBC, Dalit and Adivasi section. From the left, mostly in OBC and Dalit. Now, what uh, uh, has been the BJP strategy here? The BJP's rhetoric has been that OBCs and Dalits have been ignored in West Bengal and it has, even though it has been a so-called left-oriented party, a left party, Dalits and OBCs have not had enough representation in the leadership of the left or in, the, or in government and even now it doesn't have significant uh, representation. Now, uh, this particular thing has, can border on an anti-upper caste rhetoric which can drive upper castes away from you. So this has always been a problem for the BJP. How do you balance holding on to the upper caste vote while getting the OBC and Dalit vote along with you? And upper castes might be 12-13% of uh, West Bengal's population, but they're essentially concentrated in the urban areas. And urban areas have significant um, number of seats. So if you, if you have a concentration of upper caste around Kolkata, around some of the uh, bigger uh, cities of West Bengal, then the BJP can't afford to alienate that. So that is where Mithun Chakravarti comes in as an answer. Number one, Mithun Chakravarti appeals to the poor. He has done work on the ground. And number two, he himself is upper caste. So as a face, he's an upper caste fo face who builds that bridge for the BJP. The Another big thing is that the BJP does not have a strong leader in the state because what we've seen in 2019 and in the elections that took place in 2018 and in 2020, the entire space, we've seen that the BJP has gained dramatically in the centre. People have voted for Narendra Modi for the centre, but those same people when it came to state elections have not voted for the BJP. It started with Karnataka, then we saw it happen in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and uh, in uh, Chhattisgarh, we saw that happen to a certain extent even earlier in Gujarat. Then we saw that happen after the elections, after the 2019 elections, it got repeated in Maharashtra and Haryana, right? All these places where the BJP did extremely well in 2019 Lok Sabha elections because all of these places had an opposition face who could be put up for the uh, for voters to go and vote for. So. Therefore, the Modi factor might not work as strongly uh, in state elections simply because you don't have a strong local face to back. And now that the BJP doesn't have that. Dilip Ghosh, the leader, is not really that big a face in West Bengal. Mithun Chakravarti, on the other hand, as I said, is a star. He's uh, been a huge star in West Bengal throughout. And number two, he has also done some political work in the left's uh, core base. So there is that space within the left which will identify with Nitin Chakravarti. So this is a, uh, a card that the BJP is playing. The question is that how far will people actually vote for a person who is being identified now as, um, as someone who is a party hopper. He was at one time an axolite by his own admission, fellow traveller of the CPIM for a long time. Trinamool Congress, Mamata Banerjee sent him to the Rajya Sabha. He didn't last there for long, just two odd years and then he quit. And now coming to the BJP. So from the extreme left to the right, a journey that to many people appears to be uh, something that uh, is, is a person who cannot be trusted. That is what the rhetoric will be from the opposition and maybe many voters will say that as well. Um, as I said, Mamta Banerjee is the strongest leader there. The left is clearly in its rallies, left Congress rallies. It appears that it's making a comeback. If that happens, that the left makes a comeback and the BJP loses some of the votes that it took from the left, then the BJP is going to have trouble there. Uh, of course, we'll know what happens in early May.